2000. Give a round of applause for Robert Heidor. In seat number three, uh, looking for his first WBC title after many final tables. He starts with 1,075,000 in chips. From New York, New York, Jake Schwartz. Pennsylvania, 875,000 chips, Tony Tran. In seat number five, he's our defending champion here, looking to become the first player in history of the World Poker Tour to win the same event. Back to back years from Sacramento. Let's hear it for Ertuk Yomaz. Couple weights, welcome to season 18's WPT Rolling Thunder final table in beautiful Sacramento, California. 250 players entered. We are down to our final six as they battle out for the top prize, $279,000 up top. Each player guaranteed a minimum of 45,000 with the top three, all earning a six figure payday. Thanks so much for being with us. My name is Dave Farrell alongside Poker Pro and Thunder Valley Ambassador, Tyler Patterson. Hey Tyler, how you doing man? Hey Dave, thanks for welcoming me in. Uh, I'm pretty excited, this is a fun final table. And they just got you before the final table. You uh, you played in this tournament and you ended up in tenth, which is a nice run. Unfortunately, you're on this side of the broadcast booth. I saw you <laughs> tweeting about that as the uh, week was going on. Yeah, it was close. We had a we had a good run. We were only in for one bullet and we cashed for uh, twenty six thousand. So it's nothing. Uh, you know, it's not terrible. So run us through it. I mean, you obviously know a handful of these guys, people that follow poker closely, probably recognize some of these faces. What's your just general assessment of this final table as we get into it here? Uh, what's really interesting, we have uh, the reigning player of the year from last year in Eric Kut. We're going to call him Eric. He goes by Eric uh, Ilmaz. Uh, he won this event last year and is the reigning uh, player of the year. And second place, I believe, he was the least very close, was Jake Schwartz in the player of the year. So we have two of the, of the World Poker Tour's best right there at the final table. And it's some potential history here. If Eric does win this, it would be the first time ever that a, pl a player in WPT history has won the same event back to back. Right, and yeah, that, that would be really interesting. It's a cool storyline to talk about. Um, there's been a couple of close ones. I had a close one in that. I had a first and then a fourth in best bet. Uh, in also in best bet Jacksonville, um, uh, what's his name? Sam Panzica also had a first and then a second or third, I think, uh, the next year. So there's been some close runs, but uh, no one's done it back to back. So here we go to our first flop of this final table. It's a jack, a seven, and a deuce. Right now, Kevin's pocket nine is looking pretty good. Yeah, Kevin's the chip leader, uh, Kevin Robichaux. Um I don't know a ton about him personally. I haven't seen him a lot. He looks like he's a pretty young guy, and uh, he comes out from Chicago. I think he's coming out here. Mm -hmm. um, but it does seem like a lot of the poker guys know him pretty well, so I think he's an accomplished player also. Check from Tony. Eric's going to go 75, and Kevin now with the decision. He was the one that raised it up. Total pot size at 230,000 right now. Interesting play from Eric to lead into the raiser here. 
with really not much equity. Just a call there. So here comes the turn. Eric looking for something. And a four rolls off, so he's got a gut shot now. Oh, this makes more sense. I got it wrong in the uh, pre-flop action. Eric is under the gun. He was actually the uh, opener, and Kevin had just called with the pocket nine. So that uh, that fits the the play a little bit a little bit more. It's uh, more of a normal line. Now with the four, uh, Eric's turning some equity here. He has the uh, the straight draw. And Eric gonna fire another bullet. Mm -hmm. He does likely have the aces and over card and almost definitely the three fives, four fives. 265,000, so yeah. some early action here. Pretty big pot brewing for our first one of this final table. Over a half million chips already in the center. Kevin with a decision here. And this is definitely a tough decision from Kevin. You gotta give some credit to Eric for raising under the gun, so he's gonna start with the stronger hand. It is the first hand of the, of the day. Uh, Kevin made a pretty sick hero call at the end of day two. Oh, Got a lot of push him off the better hand. Nice play by Eric. Yeah, it's a good card for Eric to keep firing on the turn because he picks up a little extra equity and uh, recognizes that, keeps firing, and gets the better hand to fold. So the two biggest stacks of the day starting out there with a little bit of back and forth. Eric started with 109 big blinds and Kevin with 143. Nice scoop there of almost 200,000 chips. So 119 big blinds for Eric now over 2.3 million. Everybody here at this final table is very accomplished. Uh, Shankar has three WPT final tables, uh, a, sex, a, a sixth and a second so far, so he doesn't have a win. Uh, this is Jake's seventh WPT final table. Still doesn't seventh. have a w still doesn't have a win. Well, he's lots kind of close of, calls, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> he, he's entering this one. Just over a million in chips, so 54 big blinds is what he sat with. So has some work to do if he wants to climb this mountain with you know. Kevin knocking on the door of almost three million when he sat down. So definitely some work to do. But as we were talking about before we jumped on the air, these guys are all very deep and had plenty of time to play here. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, the top three guys all have, have over a hundred big blinds, and the shortest stack I think was Tony Tran, who is also a WPT champion. Uh, he has forty four big blinds to start the day, so nobody is short, and uh, we could be in for a long one. Shank under the gun, gonna pass with his ten three off. Robert looking at Jack Nine, also going to say no go. Kevin in the cutoff, no. Jake on the button. Over to Tony, King Three in the small blind. Going up to 60,000. Tony, a Philadelphia guy, he might have picked that up by his 76ers hat there. And Eric, looking down at a pretty, uh, pretty good pre-flop hand here. King Jack, gonna make the call and a pot of 140 with the small and the big blinds squaring off. I like the just call from Eric. You can three bet that hand, it has enough value, but uh, keep some bad hands in just like this. And this is about as good of a scenario for Eric. So both spike their king on that flop and Tony is the one playing coy right now. But he's gonna be in trouble if this continues. Yeah, the King Jack plays really well in these uh, blind versus blind situations. Both of them trapping here. Uh, interesting. The turn is a four. This no help to Tony's hand. Now he's going to just a bet of 45,000 into a pot of 140. It's just so dry. It just seems like it's almost impossible for this not to go two streets of value towards Eric. Unless Eric tries to get Real greedy with the raise, but I kind of doubt that's going to happen. I think it's probably just going to be two calls. Makes the call. 230,000. Here comes the river. It's a queen of hearts. Eric's hand is going to hold up. That card's got to look great to both of them. Can get more value. There's more things that Tony can actually get value out of now with the queen. 
Uh, it's less likely that Eric's beat since the queen comes. It's less likely his opponent has king queen. I think Eric also lives in Philadelphia these days, but he has Sacramento ties. He used to be here by way of Turkey. Check from Tony. Let's see if Eric can extract some value or if he's going to be happy where it sits. He's definitely going to go for some value here. It's uh, The question is if it's between 75 or all the way up to 250,000. Yeah, he's reaching. 180,000. Right in the middle right of that. Right in the middle, yeah. Yeah, right in the middle of that oh. range. 410,000 in the center now. It really doesn't feel like a bluff to Tony. That's why Tony is uh, struggling here, but uh, I don't see a way he gets away from it. I think most of the players uh, at the table see Eric as one of the more solid players. Wow, that was a great lay down wow. by Tony. Yeah. Shortest stack sitting down at this final table, or at least <laughs> close to it. Yeah, 875,000, just 10,000 shy of Shankar. And, uh, yeah, he got away from it pretty unbelievably. <laughs> nice lay down. And Eric, two pots back to back. So maybe he's going to come in and, you know, use his uh, chips to, to his advantage as he tries to make history, be the first WPT player to win two back to back at the same event. We got 280,000 up top, or 279,000. That includes a 15K WPT Tournament of champion seat. Uh, That's always nice, right? Getting the uh, the 15,000 out of the free roll. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Tony, uh, being a champion, can already play this event um, or that event, but he has to put up the 15K. Same with Eric. If he doesn't win this tournament, uh, he would have to put up the 15K. Uh, Jake Schwartz, is, we've talked about his super accomplished WPT record, but he. Doesn't get to play that tournament yet, so he really yet. he really wants to win this tournament. Same with Shankar having a sixth and a second. He really wants to get into that field also. Tony on the button here. Ace eight clubs. Going to raise it up to 45,000. Eric, small blind. Queen three. And you heard Tony talking it through there after that last hand happened. He said, I'm pretty sure that you had me. So confident in his lay down, too. Good read. That was a really strong read. It, it's really nice. Uh, it, it helps your... Psyche a little bit, knowing in 30 minutes you can, well, not necessarily in 30 minutes because you have to wait till a break to check your phones, but you can go uh, talk to a friend or uh, go find out what happened in the last the last level from the live stream. So that does help a little bit. Standard format for this WPT final table. You see the action clock by Protection Poker. It's 30 seconds for each player with the option for up to eight 30-second time extensions. Those are the oval-looking chips there that are blue and yellow on the table. And again, the uh, the action clock by Protection Poker is 30 seconds for each player to act, but they can extend that time by using those extension chips. That's an interesting dynamic to add to poker. It was much needed to uh, stop people from stalling their way into just later finishes or into the money. And they it's become it's worked its way into a big part of the strategy now. Kevin under the gun here. Queen Jack of Diamonds raising up to 40,000. Now Tony with pocket sevens in the cutoff. The decision to make is going to go up. 185,000 three bet from Tony. He does go with a three bet. an awkward stack size for Kevin to continue. Most of the time, I think you're going to continue to a three bet with queen jack suited even out of position. But when your opponent only has uh, Five one pot back, size yeah. bet, yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's all going to find its way in there. So he decides not to die on that hill and lets it go. And Tony going to scoop another pot. A couple back to back there. Strong play from Tony. We haven't talked much about uh, Robert Heidorn yet. He also has, uh, he doesn't have a lot of uh, WPT experience, but he has, uh, he just came off of, uh, I think, a s fourth in uh, EPT Prague 
and he was the World Series of Poker uh, main event uh, final table bubbleist this year. He got 10th place in the main event for 800,000. Is that the official title, the bubbleist? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, like I, I might have made that up. <laughs> so he's on the final table, sort of, but it's the unofficial final Ooh, table. Right, yeah. It's not the nine-person <laughs> televised final table. He is a WSOP bubbleist, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But still a, 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 a nice accomplishment. Oh, sure. yeah. He beat thousands of players yeah. and yep. ended up uh, getting $800,000 out of it. So he's an accomplished player, too. So Eric going up to 45,000 with his jack eight of spades. And Shankar, ace four, going to let that go. Robert, not a lot cooking with his whole cards just yet, also out of the way. Ace six for Kevin in the big blind. <laughs> He'll hang around. So heads up to the flop we go, 120K in the center. Flop comes, couple of deuces, and a four. Quick check from Kevin. Quick, almost automatic check from Kevin. Eric with an air ball on this flop as well. Let's see if he's going to remain aggressive. And yeah, he's reaching for chips. Just a small bet of 25,000. Even a big bet wouldn't get uh, Kevin to fold an ace on this flop. Ace is just going to be ahead so much of the time. He might earn himself uh, a cheap couple of cards by making that tiny bet. Nine rolls off. And he does. Another check from Kevin. Now Eric uh, does earn that cheap river card. If he wants to, he can check it back and try to make a pair, or he can continue uh, the charade. Check, check. Here comes the river. A six of clubs. So Kevin pairs his sixes on the river, but it doesn't matter. He had the best of it with that ace. Let's see what Kevin does here. He could go for value with his six from a hand like ace high or a smaller pair. But because he has an ace, it's unlikely Eric has ace high anyway. So he's going to try to catch Eric bluffing instead. Plan. It's working. 145,000 goes into the center. Really, Kevin's only decision here is deciding whether to turn his ace of clubs into a bluff and make a big play to try to get a hand that is like a nine or a bigger pair to fold, or to just call with his pair of sixes, which is what he decides to do. He'll just call, and Eric just mucks the cards. Nice read, and nice scoop for Kevin, 460,000. Yeah, I think that's uh, just the call on the end is probably the better play because not, there's not that many hands between what, <laughs> what you lose to and what you can get to fold. <laughs> just tuning in. Thanks for being with us. My name is Dave Farrell alongside Tyler Patterson. And, Tyler, I know that this, uh, this casino is near and dear to your heart. You've been an ambassador for Thunder Valley for, for quite some time. My first time actually on the property here, and I've got to say, a uh, very impressive poker room as well as the, uh, the casino as a whole. Much bigger than I expected. It's a, it's a, it's a big, big casino. Very popular casino. The slot machines are humming over the weekend. And I, I got in last <laughs> night, and I was like, hey, that was a Monday night? Like, what's going on here, man? This <laughs> yeah. place is jumping. It really is. Uh, yeah, we were only about 30 minutes away from Sacramento, so not t and there's a bunch of suburbs all around. Um, so there's plenty of population and uh this is really nice a nice hotel a nice uh this new poker room it's been around for a little over a year um all walled off so it's smoke-free poker room and all the uh you know the chargers all the tvs it's it's a top-notch place robert going up to forty-five thousand with his five four of clubs and kevin waking up with another nice hand here jack nine of hearts and jake gonna follow suit quite literally ace deuce spades no one uh, could really consider folding this pre-flop. And this could get interesting. So an ace spikes for Jake. Two hearts roll off. A straight flush potential here for Kevin. 
Really, Robert's the only one without anything. It's a little too connected. I don't think he's going to see bet, but he, <laughs> he might get involved too, just since he was the original Razor. So check, check, check all the way around on a board like this. Here we go to the turn. And a nine rolls off, so Kevin hits his nine. That might slow the action a little bit because Kevin doesn't really have to bluff to win the pot now that he has a pair of nines. Just bet it for value anyway. 125,000. It's not very often you check an ace on that flop and then end up folding to one bet on the turn, but that board could be scary enough for Jake to just let this one go. I think the more routine play would definitely be to call at least see one more card. And that's what he'll do. Robert will hop out of the way. Here comes the river. It is a seven <laughs> of hearts. He <laughs> hits it. I don't know if we've ever had a straight flush on a World Poker Tour final table before. Let's see what Kevin does with it. <laughs> <laughs> what a hand. Unfortunately for him, Jake just doesn't have that strong of a hand, right? right. I mean, that's a pretty ugly board for uh, for a straight flush when your opponent's holding on to ace rag. And now well, Kevin's going to, of course, try to extract some value uh, value here. But there's so many different options for Kevin though, because he can he can go for a small bet hoping to get raised. He can go for a huge bet hoping that Jake has something that he just can't fold. Um, it's probably just going to go bet fold or check check, but. When you're in Jake's shoes, when this board is is just so coordinated, it's just scree it's just begging for a bluff. So sometimes it just looks so bad for you that you decide to call anyway because <laughs> because it's so obvious that your opponent should be bluffing. So our first time extension chip was used there by <coughs> Kevin. 185 is the bet that he announces. So pot goes up to 590,000 and now Jake here Let's it go, and Kevin doesn't even show. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, sign, a sign of a true professional, a true right professional there. Just doesn't I can't even, even do that on a video <laughs> poker machine, much less on a final table. So, <laughs> yeah, most people are going to turn that up for the laugh and talk about it and talk about their hand there. Nope, not when there's two hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars up top. Right, not today. So, average stack size, you're seeing sixty-seven big blinds. A little north of 1.6 million. And as you see, uh, Kevin, 3.1 now. 31% of the chips in play. Eric with 2.2, followed by Robert, over 2 million. Now you have three players that are south of a million in chips all hanging around in the 800,000 range. So still very much anyone's game. Under the gun here, Eric looking at a couple of threes. is going to open the threes. 55,000. 55, Shankar folds the 10 7 suited. And the end of the gun open just scoops pot. If you guys want to interact with us, you can send us messages on Twitter. I think that's probably the easiest way. At, I'm Tyler Patterson is at Tyler Poker, and uh, Dave Fair is just at Dave Fair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, keeping right. it simple. Fam on the Facebook stream said straight flush. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing of beauty for sure. <laughs> Justin with an interesting comment here. Does Thunder Valley hire supermodels to do the final table announcing, or is that the WPT? <laughs> I assume they're not talking about us, right? They're just talking about the people that brought in the uh, the players. But if you're asking who it is on our side, it's the uh, it's a World Poker Tour in conjunction with Thunder Valley. <laughs> How's your supermodel career going? Uh, it's it's going okay. Yeah, mine's in a bit of a stance. <laughs> Put on some winter weight and have it. <laughs> I guess I'm guilty of that too. Six players on this final table, 279,000 up top, as we mentioned. All these players guaranteed 45,000, but if you get up to third, you're going to crack that six figure mark 122, 105 going to third, 177,000 going to second, and then more than 100,000 or more to first. Jake in the cutoff here with his King Jack of Hearts. Looks like he is going to bump it up. 60,000 from cutoff position. Tony out of the way on the button. Over to Eric. He's got queen nine off, and he's also going to pass. Over to Shankar. He's got a four and a three of hearts. It's been raised, and he's going to make the call. And little does he know it, but he probably doesn't want to see a bunch of hearts roll off. Well, that's cool things off. There's a couple of jacks and a nine. <coughs> Shankar and uh, Jake are close friends. Probably know each other's games more intimately than anybody else on the table. 50,000 from Jake. Shankar is out and will live to fight another day. 210,000 pushing the way of Jake. Robert came over here all the way from Berlin. I think there's kind of a crew of the German poker players that decided to come out for the WPT California Sling, little LAPC plus uh, Rolling Thunder. And then uh, they can hop over to, I guess it's the West Coast Swing now, they can hop over to Venetian in a couple, in a week or so. There's another 5K buy-in here at the, uh, at the Venetian. Tony in the cutoff with Ace-3 couple of spades. Eric on the button is going to pass this 8-7. Shankar also out of there. Robert with his king eight in the big blind. You making that pilgrimage to any of those events? Uh, I will definitely. So now that I live in Vegas, I'll definitely be playing the uh, the one in, at the Venetian mm -hmm. in Vegas. Yeah. Nice. And I did play the LAPC. It's a great event. I have a love-hate relationship with it. I've never cashed it, but... <laughs> But you keep coming back for <laughs> but more. But I keep coming back for more. <laughs> Robert, top pair, couple of kings. Just going to check it. There's one spade out there, so Tony is going to bet 70000 Not, of course, because of the spade, but with that ace in his hand, and let's see how Robert reacts. The... Uh, the spade actually does play a little bit of a role here because having some backdoor draws, like the backdoor straight draws and flush draws, it gives you more cards that you can bluff again on the turn. If it's a complete air ball, he'll probably shut down. There's a five, so you got a gut shot now. He did pull up a straight draw. That might be enough for him to bet again. A spade almost certainly would have been. Um, we saw Eric pick up that first pot uh, in that same manner with the, the turn to straight draw. 125 is the bet for Tony. Robert with top pair and the open ender. I don't think he's going anywhere. So there's 425 in the center right now. Tony only has 525 back after that bet. Robert with considerably more chips. Just asked for a count, it looked like, or at least an estimate of what he had. And so he's going to make this call here of 125. Now we get to see what Tony does with this final card. And it's a queen of hearts, so Robert's hand holds. Tony doesn't get there. He's just got ace high. 
So Robert uh, was had a big decision there on the turn to just go for, just stick it in against uh, Tony there, or just keep trapping with the with the one pair and open ender, and he decided to just call. Check, check, and yep, Tony's gonna take one final look, the pair of kings, good for Robert. And he'll add to his stack, 270,000 new chips, total pot size of 550. There was one magic card there for four rolled off. I think, uh, I think Tony might have hit the exit. A nice pot for Robert, chipping up to 92 big blinds now. Second in chips. Of course, at this WPT final table, all the players are using faded spade cards, the preferred playing cards of the WPT. Yeah, the cards got a little s more stylish now when we got the faded spade guys involved. You know, I like that they didn't overdo it, right? I like that it wasn't try hard, if you will. Yeah. You know, like it was just yeah. kind of a nice little upgrade. Yeah, it's yeah they solid look nice. stuff. And they play well too. They're sturdy. Nice enough to give me a couple of packs of those when I saw them in Vegas at the uh, the HyperX Esports Arena, where there's been a number of WPT final tables, and they've become the preferred playing cards of my home game as well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, the LAPC final table coming up. Uh, going to be there at the HyperX Arena. Have you made your way over there yet? Uh, I have, yeah. I've played, I, I went there for the, I think it was the Tournament of Champions, the first one. Got to watch the end of that. It's a cool environment, man. I mean, it's just uh, pretty conducive to having a, a nice little studio audience. So if there's some people that want to come out and sweat one of these uh, these big events and the people that are playing on the table. And, um, also just, you know, as far as production facility goes, really remarkable stuff. Uh, Eric, we're getting the best of this one, so he hits his queen on that flop. Kevin quickly checks with his 10-5 of hearts. Eric in the cutoff. You see a pretty good mix of checking back with this queen and continuing with a C bet for value, and it's just gonna end the pot there. 45 is the bet, 195 is the pot size, and it's going the direction of Eric. I've actually been in that uh, that esports arena with Matt Savage's son and three other adults, and we all played Mario Kart on a stage <laughs> in front of probably uh, 500 people. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. how, did you, how did you do, though? Because it's not um, awesome. Because everyone talks <laughs> trash about how great they are yeah. at Mario Kart, and so if you're not and there's a live studio audience, I imagine the sweat's probably pretty so real. So there's a whole stage of maybe 12 people, or uh, maybe it's 16, I don't remember. The, uh, they feel the whole, the whole race, and... Uh, I lost to all of the 12-year-olds who came to, I mean, there's adults who do it weekly, too. It's not really just for kids, but I lost to all of them. Yeah. I beat my friends. Good. But I did lose to Marco Savage. He beat me by one point, and yeah. I was very... But was at least the bragging rights over the friends. If you, yeah. you don't have to be the best in the world. You just have to be better than your friends. That's true. But Marco's kind of my friend. He likes to sure. hold, hold this over me. Yeah, as, as would I. <laughs> Who's, who do you play with in Mario Kart? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have a... You don't have a guy? Yeah. No, I mean, really? my Mario Kart days are way and way in the past. So. I mean, as are mine, but I, the, the affinity that I have for Yoshi is just, <laughs> I'll go to the grave with it. <laughs> Robert could raise it up here, 55,000, Jack 10. And Kevin here with Ace Deuce, a couple of diamonds. A couple of the bigger stacks. Ooh, now Jake in the big blind here with Ace Queen. Suited at that. Got 920,000 behind. I think we're probably going to see a shove here. It's a little big, but uh, the stack Indeed. size just kind of warrants it. All in. He knows that his stack size is so big, he's not going to get action from the worst hand very often, but just picking up the pot is just fine. And you might get a few pairs to fold, which is really, really fine. So even though we don't go to a flop, he picks up a few chips, much needed. Now in fourth, just north of a million, 43 big blinds. So again, Jake, that 
one who the WPT title has always been very elusive to him. Has been trying hard. He's in what seven final tables, right? Yeah, he's kind of like a Matt Kuchar seeking his first major, or uh, Susan Lucci, maybe. The Buffalo Bills. <laughs> <laughs> The Buffalo Bills, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm, I take that back. That is, that's mean to say about somebody. I'm sorry, Jake. I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I called him Susan Lucci. Did well, you yeah. Like that? <laughs> There's no way he knows what that reference even is. It works, then. It works. <laughs> Under the gun here, Eric. A jack and a three. Going to push that out of there. Shane Carr has been relatively quiet to start this final table also out of the way. Over to Kevin here with his queen five. On the button, pushes that out of there. Jake in the small blind. We'll make the call. Tony looks down, finds himself a six and a three from the big blind, and he's reaching for chips. Go up to 75. And Jake makes the call. 175 in the center. And the reason why that's significant is because Tony only has 425 back. So this is actually a pretty significant pot here. And this, uh, this could spell trouble. We'll see. But so Tony hits his six. Uh, Jake hits the eight. So top pair to bottom pair. Jake with the best of it here. He'll act first, and he's going to check, and then Tony quickly checks back. We'll go to a turn, and another six rolls off. So Tony in a really good spot now. Pretty big card there for Tony, and Tony just trying to pick up the, the, the pot before the flop. Um, every little pot matters a lot when you have the stack size that he does, so he just thought he should fight for it. Uh, Jake with big enough cards is going to continue even out of position with the uh, king and the eight heads up and getting a decent price, so he... That didn't work pre-flop, and they, they went check, check on the flop, like you said, and now this big six. Yeah, so it's pretty well camouflaged for Tony. 55,000 is the bet, and it looks like he's going to raise it up. He is, 190,000. And he makes a joke about the chicken wing, which... Uh, could be a physical tell towards Jake. Don't know if Jake's going to pick up on that as strength or weakness. These chicken wings here. Uh <laughs> yeah. Frank Stepichin is a regular on the World Poker Tour. No, he, he won, uh, I'm not sure what, I think it was Legends of Poker, I think I he won. I called that final table <laughs> where that chicken wing was very prominent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's out here handing out plastic versions yeah. of his chicken wing these days. <laughs> very on brand, I like it. <laughs> And he's a, yeah, he's a big fan. I think he's out there right he now. He is. I saw him out there, yeah. <laughs> and Tony going to flip it up. He goes Trip check. Sixes, yep. Check, check on the river just because the uh, nine was. Uh, <laughs> he said the chicken wing worked. <laughs> on that final table that we called, we couldn't figure out if it was a real chicken wing <laughs> or if it was a fake chicken wing for the longest time. And then he started taking bites of it. So he actually had real Whoa. chicken wings at the, wow. uh, the HyperXE Sports <laughs> Arena. And he was, uh, he was waving back and forth and then, sure enough, took a couple of nibbles off well, of That's things, unreal. So. I saw him do that one time in a tournament uh, <laughs> where he had it on a fork and it was a real chicken wing I the time I saw it. I feel like the <laughs> his opponents really had a hard time figuring out how to uh, how to respond to it. As a, I think I would as well. You're like, what are you? Yeah, it's such a, it's such a goofy too. shtick. I don't too. Seven dudes? He just likes to have fun while he's out there, while he's playing. <laughs> he's yeah, I'm why not, not, man, right? I'm not sure anybody likes these World Poker Tour events more than he does. I mean, he's sitting here sweating this one just yeah, he from, loves from the rail, right? Yeah. yeah, so Kevin in the cutoff here looking at ace-king. Going to raise it up to 55,000. Jake on the button here, ace-six suited. Both a three-bet and a call are warranted here. He won't be folding. He's decided on a three bet. <coughs> I'm going to 
gets back to Kevin and he puts Jake in, I think Jake's going to wish he had just uh, just called <laughs> and got to see this flop. Yeah, so <laughs> 275,000 in the center. Jake with 660 back and Kevin already looking over at that chip stack. There could be some merit to slow playing the ace-king here and just calling uh, because a lot of the range that Jake is going to... He'll go the other direction all in and Jake quickly folds. And that's that's the standard play. I assumed he was probably going to put it in. But most of the three bets, even the three bet bluffs, do contain